Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? <laughs> um, I, before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that, um, or to remind you, that um, today is National Ice Cream Day, and we're going to celebrate that next Sunday. So remember next Sunday to bring your homemade ice cream, Sunday night. Um, and also, we've added something to that. The youth are going to give their report on um, Passport. So that will also be that night as well. So it will be double trouble. So make sure you come and be a part of that. It will start at 6 next Sunday night. Okay, so I'll hush. Um, actually, I won't. Um, we, uh, if you haven't heard, we went to the Dominican Republic the first week of June, me, Sally, and Andrew. And we went with um, the church Trinity Baptist, which is where Andrew's dad, our former pastor, uh, preaches there now. He's the pastor there. So we were invited to go. Um, and so I just wanted to show you some pictures of what we did, and we were going to tell you um, of some things that happened. Um, but I wanted to show you a map just to give you an idea of where we were. As you can see, the Dominican Republic is in brown. Thank you, Sally. <laughs> Here's a closer view, and where we were was at La Romana, and there's the big red arrow that points to that. It's a very interesting place. We, I have never been to uh, well, overseas at all, a third world country, in my life, have y'all? I've been overseas, but that's the first third world country I've been to. Yeah, so it was very different for us to see um, this. So first we wanted to show you some pictures of just the beautiful place that we were at. And this was the first day that we, we ate at a restaurant near the sea. It was just gorgeous, these mountains. And this is where we stayed. It was a mission home within the city. And um, that is like the little courtyard area that we would meet at every day to disperse and go to our mission sites. Um, and then here is the inside downstairs where we ate every day as a group. And there in the corner, bottom corner, is um, the ladies. Do I really need this mic? Can you hear me? Just Well, of course you can hear me. Okay. Um, but these ladies cooked for us, they cleaned, they even washed our clothes. They were really awesome. Um, so I just wanted to make sure you knew them. And here's our mode of transportation. It wasn't luxurious. This um, looks like a brand new bus, but it wasn't. There were holes in the bus and you had to be careful where you stepped and you had to hold on, really. Because um, the bus driver, I don't know if he had a license. It didn't <laughs> seem like it sometimes. Um, and then this is the bus that took the construction crew to their separate areas. And we'll show you some pictures of that. So um, this is a map that was inside that we saw every day in our little dining area. It is a map of Bataes in the country. So you have to imagine um, a lot of, we were not a part of these meetings that the church had monthly and closer to the time weekly. So we didn't really know, I didn't know what a pate was, so when I got there I figured it out really quickly. And so these are maps, this is a map of all the pates and these little black dots are names of the pates and this is just in La Romana and they're all over the country. And if you noticed um, that next door to the Dominican Republic was Haiti. So I'm going to let Sally explain the pates. How they came about. Okay. So, like she said, whenever we, we weren't able to go to these meetings, we really didn't know what we were signing up for. <laughs> but that was okay. Um, but basically what a bate is, it's a sugar cane um, workers village. And so you'll see some more pictures of sugar cane fields. But basically it's, mostly it's Haitians, people who have come from Haiti who now live and work in the Dominican Republic, but it's not necessarily a good thing. Um, it started about 70 years ago um, that they needed workers in the um, sugar cane fields, and basically these people were kind of like kidnapped um, and brought over in the middle of the night. Um, so whenever they get to the, whenever they, um, Whenever they like woke up or whatever, they didn't know where they were. They couldn't get back to Haiti. They didn't know how to get home. Um, and so it's been going on for about 70 years. And they still have, um, 
it's called a headhunter. And so they're actually paid by the number of um, Haitians or just people that they get to work in these batets. And the conditions are just deplorable. We'll show you um, some of, we didn't actually get to see the inside of any houses, I don't think. Um, but just the outside. I mean, we wouldn't let our animals live in these conditions. Um, and like the bathrooms were just, it was horrible. But that being said, how awful the conditions were in these batets was still way better than what they might have lived in in Haiti. So that's just, and I've never been to Haiti. My um, sister um, spends a lot of time there, and so, you know, she can kind of confirm that. Um, but basically, they, the men work in these sugarcane fields. Um, they're not able to leave the batet until their work is done, and they're basically lied to to get, to get them to come. Um, it's very sad. Um, and the, in the batet, it's kind of a mixture of the Dominican culture and the Haitian culture, so it's kind of like its own culture within the batet. Um, the people that live there are not Dominican citizens, so they don't have the rights that other you know, people in the Dominican have. The kids are not part necessarily of a regular school system. Other groups have come in and started forming schools, um, but the kids are, you know, largely uneducated, I would say. Right. These people actually work for the mission, and they uh, went in every day to work and helped us. Yeah, this was Estella and Philema and John Robert and Manuel. And so without these people, we could not have done anything. And it wasn't just them. We had more people. Um, but these ladies in particular are kind of like... They communicated. They did the everything. <laughs> like, yeah. And they were awesome at it. And it was amazing. So I just wanted to show you this picture of what it's like. We go from a town buildings and then it's just this fields everywhere um, and then you come up to those trees you'll see trees in the distance so you know that's probably a batay and those people that live in the batay work in those fields nearby so this is um, batay Guerrero and this is their school Escuela mm -hmm. and this is what we were greeted with that first day um, they kind of just bombarded us and wanted to hold our cameras and look at their pictures and take pictures themselves. Um, they wanted to wear hats. They even lost a pair of sunglasses. Um, do you want to come in here? No, yeah, that's fine. All of the batets were different, kind of like the, like the atmosphere, kind of. Um, and this was kind of a different trip. The year before Trinity went, and they, um, they were in the same batet every day. So they really got to know the kids and they, you know, formed really good relationships there. What we did, we went to a different batay every single day and we were only at the batays for maybe six, six hours, yeah. maybe five or six hours. Um, and one of those hours we would be eating lunch. Um, but if you'll go back for just a second, oh, sorry. sorry. Like this first day, like she said, whenever we got off the bus, I mean, they just, the kids came running. I had never seen anything like this. And we're just there like, were like three to four like, kids per person. They like you get off the bus and there's a kid. And like, this is my girl. And, and she was my them. girl all day. Yeah. <laughs> she was my girl all day. She was on my back most of the time. Um, but, I mean, it was like everybody had somebody. One or two people just crawling all over you. And um, did you want to say anything? Andrew. Hey, yeah. Andrew. <laughs> but did you want me to talk about Bible school? Like what oh, we yeah. do? This is the, um, it's used as a church, but we use it as our clinic. So each day um, you either chose to go to the construction site or you would go to the bouquet and you would either be at the, on the clinic, at, or at the clinic, or on DPS duty. So this is uh, where we would meet. And this is the line for people to get in and they would get free, you know, care. So we would have a lot of people lined up. Yeah, they had to pay us. No, but they did have to pay that way. It wasn't. Um, and then here are like we had boxes and boxes of items that Trinity brought. So we came with all the medications and even like glasses for those who needed that. And we'd even have a dentist come certain days and pull teeth. So anything you want to put up? And then uh, that day, Sally, Andrew, and I were on BBS duty. 
So we, I think we told the story of Zacchaeus. So you have to imagine we're acting it out as Estella and Felina are interpreting it. So, just to, so they'd all get in a big group and just um, watch us, and then we would sit around and do a craft with them, and it would be either coloring or uh, we'd have something for them to glue. But when you got out these colors and markers, it was like gold. I mean, they would fight for them, and they would hide them. And I'm telling you, we didn't have a crayon left at the end of the day. I mean, they took off with them. And where we're talking about a coloring sheet, you're probably thinking that, you know, if I'm thinking about playing in Bible school for this church, a coloring sheet's probably going to last five minutes. No, these kids would take 30 minutes as a minimum of how long they are taking on these coloring sheets. I mean, it was... And they'd serious, have three colors. It was serious business. I mean, teachers, you know that uh, the kids want different colors. I mean, you'd give them two or three colors, and, I mean, they'd be there half an hour. And this was really neat at the bottom uh, left. That was before we gave them a snack, which was chaos. You can imagine if a crayon is amazing, a sucker is something to fight for. Um, but Literally. the magicians are really cool when they would, they would uh, Felina and Estella would always make them pray. They would all say a prayer together, and they would go, Uno, dos, et tres. And then they would pray. It was really cool. But every batay knew to do that. And then here's just some pictures of what the homes look like. And if you see this little white, if you could point to it, that is an outhouse. So these houses share outhouses. And you'll get to see inside this. Beautiful. And this one was one of the nicer outhouses. Yes. <laughs> it was. And this is the first day. <laughs> okay, and, and you have to imagine, we didn't go to any of these meetings. So then it hit me right then no and there. Idea. Travel toilet paper. I remember that being on my list to bring. And why do I need to bring travel toilet paper? That's why. Because you were there all day. So, And these are some of the homes, and they're very small. I mean, I wouldn't say any bigger than our church restaurants. I mean, they're very small. And then there's the picture of the restroom. And again, this is a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> this is nice compared to the, I don't know if you have pictures of the rest of it. I have, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is how they got their water. So we were not allowed to drink the water, uh, brush our teeth with the water. When we are in the shower, we had to keep our mouths closed. No water was to go into our bodies because it was harmful. But this is what they drink. So, um, and they would also stand out there like we saw them taking showers, kind of. I yes, mean. I have a picture of that, too. <laughs> So here's the next day we went to the Telos Estante Altos. And this was actually right next to the area where they would take the sugar cane and have these oxen and trail, trail uh, train carts and stuff. It was very interesting to see them do that. And then here's their um, church that we met um, to have clinic. And there's the line. And then this is Mike doing... Um, deworming, and so that um, was something that the kids would line up for and do, and we'd try to trick them to drink it. Some of them we'd have to shove it in their mouths, um, and even the adults were able to take it as well. And what he's doing there, he, after they would get dewormed or after they got a sucker or a snack or anything that we wanted everybody to get, they got some type of mark with a Sharpie on their hand or on their forehead or something like that so that you would know that that child had received it. And we learned real quick not to do washable because like with snack and stuff, they would go home, wash it off, and they'd be right back. <laughs> and, and it was so hard to not to catch yourself because I was thinking like an American. And, and I would think, oh, my gosh, these kids are going to go home with Sharpie X's on their heads and their parents are going to yeah. be furious. It's not like that at all. No, no. no. <laughs> and so here's VBS that day. So they were just grouped together. Here I have a video. So let me go and show And this day, like the first day we got off the bus, the kids are just running us over. The second day it wasn't like that. They were just very kind of like standoffish. Who are those people? Not they don't like see Americanos a lot. Yeah, and they would just so it was a lot different. And they love to touch our skin, you know, white skin. And but you'll see, um, like most of these kids are sitting in chairs. Like the first day they all sat on the ground. The kids all... They just brought their chairs. And you'll see, like, when we do the slideshow, I mean, it's very tiny, like, three-year-old girl just carrying a chair. <laughs> and so they were just real cute. They bring their, they just brought, bring their chairs with them. So. And, um, and you'll see, this is a song that all of them know, and it's in Creole. Um, 
but this was the beginning of the group. But every time we would have this group of kids, eventually it would be adults would gather around. And you would catch the adults telling a kid to go get them a coloring sheet and get them crayons, and that we would catch them over at coloring. It was really neat to see that. But here is just an idea of what they would sing every day. <laughs> side it's the church there that um, we worked on every day not we but Andrew was there so Andrew can finally speak and tell you about this um, but first let me talk about <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an order do you want to talk about BBS but then, okay well, you can talk about this then um, the first day we got there we, uh, we did the VBS this is Sunday so we had church first and we did VBS kind of thing the next, uh, right after that, but the, the the church was the the actual preacher of this church did the, the did the sermon, and then my uh, my dad did the sermon for the the Bible school one, and it was he had an interpreter beside him so the kids could understand. Him. I thought that was really cool because I've never I mean I've never heard my dad through a through an interpreter. <laughs> um, but it, it was it was really cool, and then after that we got to work. Uh, I don't think I worked on this Sunday. I I worked at the construction site after that. Um, let's see, I didn't. I only worked one day as a construction, so I don't really know what all went on. Uh, when we got there, it was it was raining, so they wouldn't let us get actually onto the onto the building and do work. But uh, about mid uh, about midday, it stopped raining, and we got we got right to work. I was mainly uh, they'll show you pictures. I was on a scaffolding, and I was all day lifting. Yeah, I was up on. I was up right about here lifting <laughs> scaffolding. Uh, I was lifting uh, cement up to the top so they could do whatever they did with the cement up there. I don't know. <laughs> But I spent all day, and it was kind of embarrassing because there was like a like a 12-year-old kid handing it up to me, and I'm over here <laughs> struggling to get it up. And this kid is just throwing it up to me one hand. But that's pretty much, I did that for probably three or four hours, and then I took a break, and I was mixing cement on the ground. Uh, Jonathan's doing it right there with his hair like that on the line. <laughs> Um, but that's pretty much what we did all day. You you would you would get a job, and that's what you did all day. If you got tired, then you could do something else. But no one wanted to admit that they were tired. <laughs> so uh, that's all I did. Uh, the other people, they, I know that they dug a trench for a fence. Um, it was through cement, so that I didn't want to volunteer for that one. <laughs> They moved raw. It was a lot of just kind of menial labor because no, almost everyone that went did not know what they were doing construction-wise. It was not like here, uh, <laughs> including me. I did not know what I was doing. But um, pretty much, we just kind of assisted the people that knew what they were doing, and it got done pretty much in a week. Or I mean, they didn't finish building in a week, but while we were there, <coughs> it was finished and. It was it was pretty impressive to watch, and the the like you would have seven year old to eighteen year old kids come up and just help out, and they I mean they would just walk up every morning and help out. I, and I mean I don't know it was, it was just impressive to see a whole community coming together 
just to build a church. A job and they all day just you know a little eight-year-old nine-year-old kid just do a job for them but you have to understand when we got there this church did not have it was not painted inside it did not have a roof i don't even think the windows were in and it did not have a floor, yeah, the floor so all bad. that was put in with a leak it was pretty new and so andrew actually the day of lava show so when we worked there he was at the clinic because i have a picture of you andrew working at the clinic in the middle down at the bottom you want to talk about um, for the clinic, most it, they, you had their doctors, and they would they would see each patient, and then they would assign like they would write out the prescription, and pretty much all we did was like find the medicine, count out the pills, and put them in little baggies for them. It was a lot like what you would do if you were a pharmacy tech, and since I was one, I kind of knew a little bit of what I was doing, not extremely, but it, I mean, I, I at least there I was kind of in an element I was used to but we I mean it, it, they would pretty much give every single person that went in pain medicine and uh, like anti-diarrheal stuff because every I mean just everybody had that and then you you would have people that would get their teeth pulled right there inside like that was kind of disgusting <laughs> uh, instead of doing BBS, and you really didn't know they were getting their teeth pulled unless you looked over there. It was not, I mean, they didn't have any type of drugs, I don't think. They were some no. type of... Pretty sure that they, they I'm pretty they sure that they numbed them up. Well, numb or, yeah. But, but, I mean, but, if that were me, I still would have been screaming yeah. probably. <laughs> and, I mean, they have very high um, pain, pain tolerance. tolerance. Mm -hmm. So, you just, you never heard anybody complain. The ones that were waiting to see the doctor, you just never heard anybody complain. It was very quiet in there. It was very quiet. I mean, there's <laughs> What's the baby cry? Right, there was a lot of people in the room waiting, um, but nobody just ever complained. And I, I really enjoyed doing the clinic. It was very different. You know, I signed up to do BBS because um, I work with kids all the time. But I switched over to do the clinic to see what that was like, and I loved it. And I, I want to go do just a medical trip sometime. Yeah, Sally didn't come back to BBS. <laughs> <laughs> and this was like across the road from the church at La Lachosa. And it was an abandoned house. It was in the process of being built. They ran out of money. And we see a lot of those houses all over the city. So we just had like over 100 kids show up that day. So we met inside this house and did a craft with them and told them a story. When we say BBS, it's not what you're thinking of as BBS. It's basically, we let them sing their song. Um, a couple, I think one time we tried to teach them a song, but it didn't go too well, so we didn't do that the first day. And then the lady, um, a lady from Trinity, Teresa, would read a story. They would translate it. We would act it out. We would do a craft. That's VBS. Yeah. That's VBS. So that's when we say we're doing VBS. It's not what you think of, like a three and a half hour organized. No, that's not it. <laughs> And it was lengthy because they would take their time with their craft. And we just had a lot of time just playing with the kids, yeah. just loving on the kids. We haven't really talked about that any, but we had just a lot of time to do that. Just a lot of time. And that was my favorite part. <laughs> they loved the piggyback rides. And this is the uh, dedication service for the church. So we did that the very last day. We're at, we were at Lala Chosa like all day long. And so we got together and made um, on a sheet <coughs> A little gift to give them, and that's us presenting it. And that's Jonathan and his father. Do you all remember his name? What was his name? Ramon. Ramon. He was the pastor at La Lechosa, and Jonathan is his son. And it's kind of interesting. His dad, Jonathan's dad, they're Haitian, and his dad was born in the Batay. So it was neat for us to see he was one of the children that we were ministering to. At you know years ago, that was him, and he was able to rise above that. So that was kind of neat for us to see that. Okay, and then here's Bate 30. Some of them have numbers. And this is the day that I, um, I did clinic one day. And um, the reason I didn't want to do clinic is because you had to wear scrubs, mm -hmm. which is, if you know me, I'm hot natured. So I'd not want to be out in that weather with long pants. It's not my thing. Mm -hmm. 
so that was good enough. So that was one day of clinics was great. So I did deworming that day. And that's just an idea of the line of people that would wait to be registered for the clinic. And then here's Sally with the information. And funny story, I really couldn't sometimes read what the doctors were writing. And I filled out, well, they had told us we get everybody vitamins, so that's fine. Um, but I started noticing, I, I don't know how this happened, but I started giving out children's Tylenol instead of vitamins. <laughs> so I gave out like a ton of children's Tylenol <laughs> before I realized, because I was like, well, we're out of whatever, and they were like, that's vitamins, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, well, at least I wasn't giving out like some something that might really hurt somebody, you know, hopefully, but. And here's an idea of what this could tell you look like. Um, and that's, the, as you can see, that's how they shower. Um, there's another outhouse. Yeah. And there's the toilet. And this is, this lady down here, she was washing her clothes and she wanted us to take pictures of her. She had pet rabbits. We don't want to know what she did with those pet rabbits. Um, and then over there's one of the um, apartments, like it wasn't a home that we were used to seeing. And there's five apartments on just that side. I'm not sure if there was another five on the other side. So these were much smaller than the home. And at one of the bidets, that lady's washing her clothes in the little um, tub thing, but one of them, there was like a bidet washing machine that they, yeah. in the middle, and so they just bring their clothes to this washing machine. and Had a generator? Yeah, yeah had, had a generator. Up. That's it. interesting. So it's just a great way to, to sh you know, be thankful. You, really are thankful. Oh, yeah. After you yeah. thankful for And then we visited the orphanage. And when we hear the word orphan or orphanage, you know, it's a sad story, you know, um, parents, which this is the same case here, but um, the facilities were amazing compared to the Batay. So we were not expecting to see this. And there's their school. And, and this is not the type of orphanage where they're trying to get the kids adopted. None of these children are um, up for adoption. They're trying to, you know, educate these children so that they'll become, you know, a vital part of the Dominican um, society. But they had excellent facilities. And what was the guy, the baseball player's name? The, uh, they said that Albert Pujols, Albert Pujols. He has donated, donated a lot of money lot for, of for, this, for, for this particular one. Yeah. That's where he's from. And then this is our last potato that we went to, potato cacata. And there's just some pictures of the clinic, deworming, Sally going through the probably children's tall <laughs> <laughs> I think this, this is the second day, so I had already got that lesson straight. <laughs> and then here's BBS. to our trip and y'all prayed for us so we give a big thank you for that because we had an amazing time. Um, we have a video to show but y'all have anything you want to say? I just want to echo that and say thank you and um, I want to encourage y'all to just be praying about if God would be <coughs> to go on a trip like this because this is not a one time thing for me. Um, missions is something that it's just part of who I am. I'm always like it's been a while since I've been on a trip, but now that I've went on this one, I'm kind of like geared up, ready to go again. Um, and I'd love to take some of you with me somewhere. Um, hint, hint. <laughs> so be thinking and praying about if um, God would have you to um, join me. Uh, I would just say thank you and, and thank you. <laughs> There was there was one there was one that was a American yeah he doctor. came with a group mm -hmm. and there, then was, there was a lady who yeah. was the nurse practitioner and she's down there from what was her name? she went to oh, um, yeah. she her was name was Nicole and um, <coughs> like a year of residency or wherever it is that she went and got her nurse practitioner you have to do a year.
somewhere like what she's doing, and so there was her, and then the rest of them were Dominican nurse practitioners. Yeah. And then the one doctor was like a foot surgeon, and he was down there with a group from his church in Jackson, Tennessee. They stayed at the same mission <coughs> with us. Um, and his group went somewhere else, but he came with us. Yeah. So. Um, but I know that the dentists, like they would hire them to so come the in. And the eye doctor. Yeah. And the eye doctor, she just had a suitcase of glasses. And if somebody needs glasses, they just try them on. Try them on. Yeah. Just a suitcase of glasses. Is that basically the only medical care they get? At the potatoes, I believe, unless they're able to go into the town. Like I, I did ask, you know, because we saw a lot of um, expectant mothers, and so I asked, you know, where do they have the babies? Because I'm thinking they just have them right there. And they're like, no, they go to the hospital. So there was a hospital somewhere, somewhere locally that they could go to. The Haitians that work in the potatoes, did they get actually paid for that? Yes, yeah, but I mean, it was very, very, very minimal. It's basically like you did your service. go through fourth grade I didn't, most of the schools we didn't actually see a lot of people working no was, um, I don't know if it was the type of season it was while we were there yeah. we saw a few but we didn't really get there and see like you know like a hundred people in a field we just yeah. saw like a few people and so I really don't know I, I asked that everybody stayed because there was a lot of men and the men are the only ones allowed to go into the sugar cane fields and do the work and the women stay and do you know women things housework so they said that day was the very last day to get in what you needed to get in. So it was like the end of the season. So I think for two or three months, they had no work until it started back again. So they had to just spend for themselves you know, the next two months. And some of them, like, they, they were only there during, like, that season, and then they'll go back to Haiti or wherever. Um, but some of them, they, they've made it. And the group that we were with, they, it was like this whole organization. We don't really remember what it was called. Do you remember? Like Moises' group? It was from a hospital. There was a good yeah. Samaritan hospital that this guy Moises worked at. I don't think we had any pictures of him. He was kind of like the overall guy. And he hired Jonathan, who was like, there was a lot of people kind of that were in charge. Yeah. And Moises is um, Estella's brother. And Right. Estella is our interpreter, and he they grew up in a batay. And so yeah. Moises, I think, just said, we've got to get back to the batay. And so now they started all of this. So it's really mm -hmm. awesome. Any other questions? You mentioned the generator. The batay had power, yeah. but not like, well, like they didn't have like air conditioning no. or um, they had these like things that look, look like satellite dishes on the top of the house, but I think we found out those were the telephone lines. But they did have power. Yeah. But not like what, what we would think. No. No. And it probably, I don't know for sure, but it probably wasn't like on all the time. You know, it might have been like kind of shoddy. Well, I guess we'll show you the video and and you probably don't know many of these faces, but just remember their faces and keep them in your prayers because they are just as precious to God as you are. And so we'll play that for you now. And again, thank you.
Looking back at me 